Hello and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be talking about the reshape command or for others you may know as this as translating between wide format and long format. So I hope you found the right video because that is what we're going to be talking about today. And well, as you can see, we already set up as usual. I have my do file ready here to go, set up clear, set my directory because as you may have seen some other people do, which I have nothing against at all. You could do this namely by the drop down menu, but as always here, we're going to try to code it, which is why I said the reshape command is the one we're going to be using. And what I actually plan to do today is that I'm going to go both between long to wide format and wide to long format. So I'll show you both ways in this video, showing two different data sets to also give you a better feel for, well, different kinds of data. And of course, we're going to do it with data, the data sets that are available to everyone. So it should be right here in Starter, hopefully also in the one you have. Otherwise, we will find another one so we can hopefully make it work, shall we? And of course, never ask often, but please don't forget to subscribe because, well, that helps the channel. The more the merrier, they say. And now let's get started with from, which one do we do first? We do from wide to long or long to wide? Let's do long to wide because we need a data set and we're gonna use one of the system, like I said, and BP long is the name. That should actually give it away. This was long format, whoops. So let's open a data set. We can already see what it contains here, but let's take a look at what does it mean to be in a long format? And at first glance, you can also just look at this like, huh, that looks like panel data or like they also call it longitudinal data. Oh, the name kind of gives it away, right? And then you can see here, patient observed twice. So you got multiple observations for the same entity. And that can be firms, patients, countries, whatnot. You can think about it yourself here. We got a measure of sex, age group, before, after. So these are measurements of, I would say, the blood pressure. Educated guess what BP stands for here, but I believe I'm right. Oh yeah, BP, blood pressure over there. I should maybe just read, but okay. In any case, we have everything that we need to know here. So what we're trying to do now, we're gonna translate this into a wide format. Like you see the data is now long, we're gonna make it wide. Wow, such amazing stuff, I know. But what we essentially want to is get one observation per patient. And then we're gonna, for instance, have BP measured twice. So we're gonna get two variables for BP, one for before and one for after. That's the goal. So let's see how we're gonna accomplish this. And the command is, as I already alluded to, reshape. And then we're gonna reshape into a wide format. So we're gonna write reshape wide. And then first you're gonna write up all the variables from which you are trying to say split or you know get repeated variables for or multiple variables for. Something that changes over time. So for instance here I write BP and I'm gonna write age group. Honestly, I didn't check the age group. If somebody changes over time, you guys can do that. I'm not gonna write sex here because I know that one is a uh, constant measure within this data set, but otherwise you can just write it there if you wanna split it. That is perfectly fine. Then we need two things which are important. You need something called I and something called J. And we need that for both when we reshape to long or wide. Doesn't matter, you need it always. And then you can think about what is it? Hmm. I refers to the ID identification or ID of whatever variable you have. In our case, that will be patient. The variable patient in the data set, let's take a quick look again, indicates indeed which, well, patient or observation or entity that we are dealing with. And then we need J, which is the time variable, which will be in your data set, which here can be called when. And suppose you wouldn't have a time measurement, that could happen, then you have to make it yourself. And you can use a command like bysort or a certain form of generate. We got another video for that, so it's a different topic, but you can make it yourself and that's perfectly fine and not too difficult to do. But in this case, we just have to write when, because that is, well, the variable that dictates when the blood pressure was measured. So we're gonna go here, reshape, and I hope that it works. Good, it worked. So we see here, we go from number of observations, we half it, that will make sense because now we go from two observations per patient to only one. You can see how the number of variable change, what is dropped because now we don't have a time measurement anymore. There's no need for it. And what is then split up into more. And you can see it, take a look at how it looks now. You see indeed one patient, one row. And now we see BP1, BP2, H group one, H group two, sex remain constant. So that just gets in here as well. You can also 
I'll let you guys double check if age group is constant. If somebody changes from one age group to another, I didn't check. Go do it if you want to. But that's essentially how you would accomplish going from well wide to long. Or long to wide, sorry. I have to really wake up this morning. But the point is, you could also just go quickly back. Suppose you make a mistake. You can just write reshape back into long. Straight after your command, of course. And it takes it right back to where we were before. And that's quite nice, right? But then again, this is a nice little command you can write, of course, but there's no need. Why? Because we use a do file. So like we learned a do file, I can just go back, mark the things I do, run the code up until where I was and change what you need to change. That's essentially it, right? So that's also why I would like to promote do files here. Nothing wrong in drop down menu is a great place to learn the things, but the ultimate goal should be to learn how to code your items. That makes it also a lot faster. And uh, well, that concludes one part of this. Now let's go into the other part, which is about how to go, well, say the other way. So now I'm gonna show you a wide format and we're gonna put that into a long format, shall we? And I got a different uh, video, video data set, which is called, let me go and check here. It is called NLS wide one. And then we write clear because we already have a data set in here. So let's load in the data and see what we are dealing with. We got a nice little survey here of young women, it says. And in this case here, we got occupation groups. This time I did learn to read over here, okay. And what else do we have? We got the counts, we got college grad, age, city, union, and so forth. We've got different measurements where the common denominator here is the first part of the name and you see in 68 and later you will see is measured in 88, so I believe 20 years later. And what you can then see indeed here that you got repeated measurements stored in different variables. So now we're gonna swipe that back and translate that into a long format. So it looks more like say panel data, for instance, because it would be difficult to do panel stuff on this here. Suppose you would like to do that. So what we need here is a different common, yeah, a couple of different items. First, we need to reshape. That should be clear by now. And of course we need to now write up all the variables that we wish to change. And you need to write the common stuff they call it of each of these variables. That is the common name they have. So you saw I already wrote count and I could just write college grad here. Why do I do that? Because as you can see in our variable list here, these are the things that are common. Count 68, you also have count 88. The common factor of these are count. And so forth for college grad and so forth the whole way with all the variables. So then we can indicate which variables we wish to change. So I can just write them all up here. Hopefully I make no typo. I will never say anything about that. It will be awkward if I have to redo anything, right? So we go hours, we go wage, and I believe that was all. But that's not it. Just like with reshape wide, and I already said so, we need both I and J. But this is slightly different. Well, at one point. First, I is still the identification here. And what I identify as each of these, well, groups, that was their occupation, so OCC. You can see that back in the data if you want to. But J is still the time measurement, but here we don't have it. And that's fine, that's actually on purpose, we don't have it. So we just need to give it a stop, a new name, so it can identify what it is. And we can call it year, for instance. But depending on what data you have, you can just change this to day, month, or how your measurement would be. So I'm gonna generate year. And then I'm gonna run it and pray that I typed it right. Let's see. I did not type this right because of course I have to write wide here. And we try again and ta-da, variable year not found, data already wide. Maybe I should maybe make it into a long because that was exactly what we're doing. This is going very well, but luckily it worked out. So you see here, that's also what I meant. You have to take some red code before you get there. And now you can also see here we've been into long format. So always remember to write where you're going. And remember, unlike me, where you're going. So you see here, we go from reshape long. Let's take a look at how the data actually looks like. And fortunately, as we expect, we now have professionals measured twice in two different observations. One for 68, one for 88 and all the common variables here that we wrote up in the list because they change over time. So that's quite nice. What is interesting to see here, of course, that union also now got filled out in 88, of course, was not a thing in 68. Things change over time, interesting. 
So now you can also see how this actually worked out. And just like with the other one, you can immediately go back by writing reshape wide in this case, or simply just reset your data to how it was because we got a do file, but it seems nice to show you everything here. So, well, that uh, I think, yep, that should conclude everything here. And I really hope that you learned something here today. And now this should give you a good introduction for this. In any case, we can also revisit back later if we need to be. But in any case, I hope that you learned something here today in Stefan's classroom. And I hope to see you back for another class in Stefan's classroom. Bye-bye.